Yeah. Anyway, getting back to the the, yeah. the the recordings things, I noticed the last two, um, sort of incidentally, I thought, well, I better put up what these things are about. And so I went through them, sort of skipping, but stopping at every change of subject or variation in subject to analyze and to write down what we were talking about. And so I don't know whether you've noticed, but the descriptions for the last two, at least, are very long. And can they take me, took me quite a while to, um, to write. And that, but I, it may also made me wonder that, yes, these are, we've talked about lots of different things here. And whilst I think a, a verbatim um, text is nobody's ever read, but actually a summary of the points does somehow seem useful in terms of maybe a starting point for, for something, mm -hmm. something that we could um, um, write yes. up or develop or build a, a, some sort of structure around so that you know this one is talking about these things and this is talking about these things and these are it it, uh, it just seemed that they were um a good summary and a useful summary of uh, the sorts of things that we've been talking about and i've been thinking mm -hmm. a little bit more about that and if it's sort of possible to, in order to try and get um, a more, a more sort of fixed taxonomy of the, the various things that we've been talking about and how they link together, which sort of goes right back to the beginning, I think, of what it is, mm -hmm. what is Dharma. Yeah. Um, and one of so one of the things that I th I've been thinking about is is aphorisms because I read a, a little bit I didn't know much about it I'd come across them before but um, an aphorism is the sort of idea that you can say in a a, a sentence a, a lot it's a bit like the sort of poetry versus mm. prose. So that in, you know, you have to use a lot of words in prose to say something, but you can say it more in a, in a different way and perhaps more succinctly. Um, and, a, and in a way that is more mm -hmm. um, direct through a poem than you can in through prose. And you can do the same apparently in philosophy uh, rather than having a lot of text and writing a book you can say important things in just one or two lines, but you have to work at it. Um, and yeah. you, it's like you do with poetry, I guess. I don't know, I'm no good at poetry. But uh, it made me wonder whether we could perhaps think of aphorisms as another way of presenting information so that you you condense the thinking around something. And instead of expanding mm -hmm. that condension into a, a lot, lot of prose, you can say it in a, in a short phrase, which contains a lot of information from which you have to do a lot of thinking mm -hmm. so that it's, it's there, mm -hmm. but within it, it allows for a lot of um, external thought processes. It's not all contained within the phrase. The phrase mm -hmm. makes you think beyond it. Yeah. And I, I'm going to buy a book on that. It's Africa. like an anchor. Yeah, it's it's it's, that, it's like an anchor, but I think it's I think the it's the poetry aspect is a is a better analogy. Because like poetry, when you read a poem, it makes something else happen in your head. It expands the position from which you held before. 
in in a in a very direct way it, without language it sort of stimulates something in your head and makes connections makes you think of things reminds you of things creates feelings mm -hmm. and all of that can happen through listening to our dialogues or reading them if they were written all in text but that's just one way of doing it that's a sort of way of here is all of the information and from all of this information you can get sort of snippets of, of insight and the, the the way a poem would do it as opposed to a story is that you read a small piece of information and from that you get potentially a lot of insight and an, an expanding from it mm -hmm. and I, that's the idea i think with mm -hmm. aphorisms is that you get a small statement but if you think about it it creates um thoughts in your head related to that so it's a starting point which makes you think and the things mm -hmm. that you think about are all of the things that condensed down into the aphorism which is about i think sort of think it's a bit like how poems work Anyway, it's I. It's an, it's that, well, so well, I, very interesting. Yeah. Well, it's only yesterday. I, I'm looking at the. Uh, oh, I'm looking at the uh, your notes at the moment. It's the first time I've seen them, and I've actually been thinking about something similar myself. That, you know, whether or not you know we could condense some of these videos into a, you know, basically edit them up and, but that you know, that's going to be a huge amount yeah. of work. Um, well, this I might be a way of doing it a little bit, a, a little bit quicker. Rather than having to do yeah, with the editing, yeah. you could just mm -hmm. take, you know, try and summarize mm -hmm. those points. And then if you wanted to you know, look back, you could watch the whole thing. But you could, because a lot of the time mm -hmm. I spend just not saying anything. I guess sort of like huge pauses while I'm trying to think what the words are that I should be saying. Um, and a lot of the things that we say are building up to something because we're thinking about it rather than articulating it. So just picking up those summary yeah. points allows, I think, quite a lot of um, the time to be condensed into something useful. So yesterday, just for instance, I was thinking about this and when Julie was talking and she posted on um, the, um, against the stream um, WhatsApp chat, that piece by um, Aldous Huxley, I was thinking about creativity. So I just, I thought, well, how can I say what I'm thinking without using many words? And that's why I said, maybe creativity can illuminate existence and art communicate the experience. So I was trying to think there's a lot in that sentence there's a lot of my thinking mm -hmm. and the sentences. So I was trying to make an aphorism. I was trying to mm -hmm. sort of say, right, this, this sentence contains lots of information from which without having to ask questions, because I think that's another key thing is that you, because you haven't got somebody there to answer the questions you have to have, it has to be that it will work that you can work on it in your own head to think about what it means. Mm. And that's why, and I've just, it made me wonder, I think it, apparently um, Nietzsche was big on aphorisms and he spent a, a lot of his time trying to say in a short sentence what he would otherwise use an awful lot of words to. And he apparently made notebooks of, of aphorisms. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a sort of become a, a way of presenting uh, philosophy as a, which is an alternative mm -hmm. way to a lot of prose. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed to me an mm -hmm. interesting, so it's more than a summary. Well, would an aphorism be like a, a, but it would be a starting point, like an idea. Uh, it would be a, con I mean, it, would it, it be would be an assertion? It, yes, yes, it could be an assertion. It, it could be, 
yes i mean i i'm very reluctant to make assertions so that's why i i put maybe at the front of mine but it could be i could have said creativity can illuminate existence and art communicate the experience which is an, an yeah, then defend assertion. then you defend the position yeah <laughs> then i'm but, then you defend but, it. <laughs> but because there isn't and because i'm not a philosopher i'm you know and i I've only thought about it a bit. I'm a bit more sort of suspect about what I'm saying. So that's why I said, oh, but the disclaimers can thought, go on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. And I, yeah. It, but also, perhaps it changes the way that you read it and it changes the way that you you mm. think about something. Because if it's presented as a question, which I didn't actually put a question mark at the end of that one, but if it's presented as a question, then maybe that makes you think differently about it other than the statement i don't know i mean i haven't really thought about it enough and i'm gonna to have to read this book on on aphorisms but i i just it just struck me that it's an interesting it's an interesting alternative to how to be concise but also expansive if you see what i mean if you you know to... I, oh yes i i think i do and uh, well one way that i've seen it or i've sort of thought about it uh, which is probably similar in some ways but using different terminology is is basically a system of, of assertion and, and and a defense of that assertion uh, you know and that that assertion could be you know uh, um, an aphorism it could be a quotation um, it could be you know basically any short um you know concise piece of text that then sort of leads on to uh, uh, some sort of defense or, 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 or argument against that, that particular assertion. Um, is, is that sort of? Yeah, yeah, I think, that's, yeah, I think that's exactly it. And, and I, I think the only, no, I, I, I don't really think that there is a, a difference between what we're saying. It's, it's I think the, the precision comes within how well the aphorism is written. So it's a, again, that comes back yeah. to poetry. You could, it's the difference between writing a summary of a story in a prose story and writing a poem, which contains the similar thoughts that a descriptive piece of prose could um, evoke. So, uh, Mm -hmm. It's uh, the use of language in in a very precise way and a very thought out way, so that your so the responses you're getting are less ambiguous perhaps than they could be in a in a summary, and that they are more um, uh, they're richer, they contain more, which is a sort of direct spark for direct communication and I think that's one of the other things that I was sort of trying to talk about and it's one of the things that's bugged me for a long time about the use of language and how language is very useful but also a barrier to communication mm -hmm. and, and that maybe Poetry is better than prose for direct communication, and maybe aphorisms are better than books, or an alternative at least, for direct communication of ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, that's uh, pretty much it's very similar to what uh, I was thinking of how to structure a, you know, a taxonomy where we have an assertion of offense uh, yeah. or some sort of you know, um, uh, rejection, perhaps. Uh, but, but, uh, yeah, but, but I think sort of you know, ex expanding the scope to, to, to sort of not just sort of bland sort of uh, you know, rationalist assertions, but sort of you know, poetic ones that sort of reach into yeah. you know, who we are. Uh, because you know, we're not most of the time we're not rational beings but we're emotional beings you know we live in our limbic systems yeah <laughs> that, that's that's what drives us um so you know aphorisms poetry prose that 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 can sort of draw us 
you know, that, that sort of uh, sort of grounds us into our emotional being, into our into our into our limbic system, uh, before all the rationalizations come up. I mean, rationalizations are all very nice, uh, but you know, and necessary. But yeah, you know, I think we need that emotional attachment to what is being discussed or what is being asserted. Um, it needs to reach you somehow. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, um, I think that's a very, that whole idea is an interesting one, that the way of creating a taxonomy using more sort of poetic language is an intriguing option is an is a it makes you think differently about how things can be communicated mm -hmm. which is sort of how this can work how connections can be made but I don't know what the answer is, but it, it's a, it, it just is a different starting point from a, a sort of traditional framework. I, I, think, yeah. I think it's a very important starting point that that actual, well, you could call it a summary, but that sort of, you know, assertion, you know, concise, a concise assertion, which can then be, you know, uh, you know, argued for, argued against, or, or, or whatever, or, or criticized, or, or supported. Uh, but if you have a clear assertion, then, then you know, people can then, that, that's, that's a, a, an assault, a not starting point into, into the discourse on that particular topic. And, it, you know, and I don't know that you need to, to sort of, I, I sort of see it, I guess, in levels where you've got sort of the, the assertion, the, the, you know, the aphorism or the quotation or the what, whatever sort of assertion that it might be. Uh, and then you have a, uh, you know, an elaboration of that, of that particular um, assertion, um, you know, perhaps in, in support of it, for example. Um, and uh, and, and that doesn't shouldn't necessarily need to be, you know, very very long. Uh, you know, I'm just sort of thinking of breaking it down to levels so that people can sort of you know pick the level that they want. You know, from going from sort of a very short, sum, concise summary to a to a discussion about that summary to a to a full length book or books on yeah. that that entire subject. Yeah. Um, so you know. People can sort of you know pick their level for for the sort of things that they that, that appeal to them, uh, or or to, to those things that they think they they need. Um, and I I, so, yeah, I wonder but, what yeah, I, think, certainly think, yeah. I wonder thinking about that that other media can also work within that framework that idea that you start with the the, the the pithy statement the concise statement or or um question or um assertion and around that like you say are other associated things some of which might be a, a, an explanation of part of it and you could also have things like a film or a, a movie which relates to that idea, uh, as well as a book, mm -hmm. maybe a painting, and poetry, music, mm -hmm. perhaps, so that you you sort of have a, um, a, a a bit of those cloud words where you you say you know the, the things that are, appear more often appear in larger mm -hmm. a larger text. Mm -hmm in a way things that are floating around that initial starting point and are related to it and are different interpretations of the the thought that's that's internal to that statement so different ways that people mm. have explored that thought and it might it might even be from a looking at it from a scientific point of view there might be 
think I can't think what they could be, but there might be all sorts of different or even mathematical ways of looking at this point that had been made in the first place. And it would it would it would sort of create then a a richer and more dynamic and diverse menu of things that people could it would allow different people a way in mm -hmm. yeah. and children's yeah, well, I, I, th th that is an as yeah but the, there is an aspect of uh you know the textuality uh you know way too much text although it's you know obviously necessary uh, we do tend to privilege text yeah. um, to, to the exclusion of other communication. Uh, and of course, there's plenty of other alternatives to, to, to speech uh, and, and text. But text in particular is, is uh, it's a bit of a problem, actually. So uh, I think, you know, perhaps um, for most people, text is not a big part of their lives. It's really only part of the lives of you know, intellectuals uh, or, or, or people who, whose business it is to, to sort of produce text. Um, people don't like reading all that much either, in, in general. You know, if, we, if we look at a, at a, a cross-section of a population and how much they actually read, as opposed to just skim, um, you know, I, I don't think you'd find a very large proportion of people who actually are readers. No, you're right. Are much less writers. Uh, and so, you know, you have to, you know, privileging text is, is something that, you know, ha I guess happened, you know, from the, from the earliest days, you know, you know from, you know, when, when uh, religious texts were sort of went from being oral traditions into textual traditions. And all of a sudden, things were a lot more, you know, static. There was a lot more less dynamism uh, within within those, those texts. There was a lot more um, uh, what non-negotiability uh, within text. So, so for me, for me, it sort of marks the the, the difference between well, in in the Christian sense, I think that they sort of express it in terms of uh, the difference between, um, uh, uh, what, how do, how's it said? I think it was grace, but the difference between grace and, and uh, the letter of the law. Uh, whereas, you know, Christian, the gospel Christianity was supposed to be all about grace. Uh, Judaism was about the letter of the law as it was written. And so Christianity was an attempt to sort of, you know, jump out of that textual tradition back into a sort of, you know, more, uh, you know, free flowing sort of compassionate response to life rather than, than sort of, uh, you know, looking up the textbooks for every single problem or, or, or thing that happened. Um, so, and you see that in many traditions. Um, I mean, Christianity then went through its own problems when it sort of went from a, uh, you know, a, a, um, a, a verbal tradition into a textual uh, uh, religion, you know, probably up, you know, AD 400 or whatever, whatever um, or 300. I think I think they are written. The, I think the Bible was written about, or or, or was, was compiled about the first verses about 300 years after uh, um, the death of of, of of Christ, and so. There was a, you know, it went once again from 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 a tradition tradition of grace into a, into a into a textual tradition again. And you yeah. see, see that happening with Buddhism, where it's sort of you know very much a verbal tradition, and then it sort of uh, hardens into into a into a textual yeah. tradition. And so the same the same thing could happen here if you know if you're not careful, as you know where you can be privileging text. And not uh, giving enough um, weight to other forms of um, communication using the media that's now available. Uh, yeah, no, it's a good point. I mean, I, 
I've I would agree entirely that um, and also I guess thinking about those individuals and I you could include Socrates as well because he never wrote anything down that it was also to do with their pers the personalities and the presence of the individual at the time obviously we don't know what they were but if you you can imagine that being with somebody listening to someone offers all sorts of other ways of communicating than do just words so the way that they act mm -hmm. the gestures they make the way that the words are said the presentation are all as important maybe even more important than the words themselves because you could imagine somebody saying the words that christ said perhaps but not being a particularly pleasant person or not saying them in a particularly engaging way in which case it would sort of mm -hmm. wouldn't have no impact the personality mm -hmm. has to be engaging the method of communication that is to say had to be engaging for people to have taken notice of somebody who was otherwise not an important person or as important as loads mm -hmm. of other people so it had to be mm -hmm. more than the text it has to be something mm -hmm. about the method of communication you assume i you know i who mm -hmm. knows, but it would be difficult to imagine otherwise somebody mm -hmm. has to have had a way of saying things a way of communicating in order for the, to have the impact mm -hmm. and we've got wow. that opportunity now because we have so many other different methods of communication which weren't available film and painting mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and audio recordings lots of other ways of um, presenting information which perhaps we ought to be thinking yeah more mm -hmm. about those than as you say the, the the text which can become a sort of a, a, a canon and you know it becomes the, mm. the written word becomes the oh well, that, that must be it then that's the that's that's yes. the, because it, it's been put yeah. down the word yeah it's, a, it's very good that's very interesting that's a it's a very interesting point. Yeah. Well, I'd be about. I want to go. I haven't read through all your notes yet, so I can. I've only just seen them. Um, well, I think it's a, you know an excellent idea. I, I just wonder whether it would would be time to sort of start uh, bringing in other people from uh, you know inviting people to sort of follow it. They might not find it very interesting. I think very very few people would. That doesn't matter. Uh, a few people might. Yeah. Uh, so perhaps, perhaps uh, uh, inviting um, you know the, the, the secular dharma group because uh, we have actually actually mentioned any of this to anybody. I no. don't think. I might have mentioned once when I when I sent my video and put it in in the secular. I was sort of hoping that maybe they'd sort of twig and sort of see that there was other videos there as well. <laughs> I don't think that really happened. And, and that was a very long and boring video too, so <laughs> maybe that cut them off. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, now that we've got some good text going here, it might be time to, you know, start promoting um, each of the, uh, the videos, perhaps one by one, you know, from the start, you know, with, with the notes, perhaps just include the notes with, with the uh, a mail, an email link to the, to the full um, video. Um, something like that and not necessarily so sort of setting I mean, this is where we're up to but sort of starting from number one and then perhaps on a, on a weekly basis just sort of reposting things from that, that have been discussed uh, previously and just seeing it yeah if, yeah who if yeah, anybody is going to get, get engaged with this mm -hmm. well you're right it's yeah, just an idea yeah no i think that's quite interesting i might what i might do is go back over the other ones and see if there's a 
there's other things within those and I do a sort of similar thing so that each one has an introduction of um, the, the salient points, if you like, that, that arise. Yeah, yeah. But I'll do that yes. now. But that I'll, would be really good. Yeah. yeah, so that we've got some sort of consistency. Yeah, that, that would be excellent if, if you could do that because I can't. <laughs> yeah. um, I've got been wanting to sort of, I mean, every time I look at, look at it, I say, oh, that really should have some notes. You know, that really should have a few. Yeah, yeah okay, well, and, I'll... And, you know, every time I look at it, I think the same thing. <laughs> well, look, I've, I've got to go because um, something's just arrived yep. for me. So uh, it's been good to chat, as, as always, Gary. Yeah. And next week... Um, well, let I'm me back. know... If, yeah. Let me know if you've got to, if you sort of make some more notes and so I can you know look at them and yeah, read them and I will do. perhaps then we'll decide when when to start sort of pumping them out and uh, trying to get yeah. people engaged. Okay, well I'll 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 say okay. That. I'll catch okay. you again. Right. Well, if I may, next week I'll, if it okay. works, I'll if, be in Italy. Okay. If not, okay. week after. Or whatever. Okay. See you, okay. Later. See you then. Bye bye. bye.